Hey, my name is Cedric from Vertex Marketing Agency. And in this video, I will answer the question, how good is the Facebook pixel at tracking conversions after iOS 14? So that is the million dollar question. How good is the Facebook pixel at tracking and reporting things that are happening on the website like purchases or leads? So right now I am in ads manager. And as you can see here on the results, we got 126 leads on the website. And if we look at our active campaign account, we can see that we got a total of 154 contacts. Now this is a brand new active campaign account and it was only used for this campaign. So so we can assume and we can say that from ads manager to active campaign, the difference in terms of reporting is that ads manager in this example reported 81% of the actual total leads. So now let me explain a little bit more my setup and how I'm able to confidently say that Facebook is only reporting 81% of the leads. See, now when you ask a question like how good is the Facebook pixel at tracking things like leads or purchases, it's a really tricky question because let's say you have something like an e-commerce store, you're probably having a lot of different channels like Google ads, Facebook ads, SEO, Snapchat, and the list goes on driving traffic to the website. So it's really hard to see at your total amount of leads or your total amount of sales and saying, okay, well, this much actually came from Facebook ads and this much came from something like SEO. So what I did in this uh, experiment, I guess I'll call it, is that I only added the URL of this landing page that I created on my Facebook ads. So I created a brand new landing page on a custom subdomain and the only people that know about this URL are the people that saw my ad and clicked on my ad. So I am not talking about this special offer on any sort of websites or on YouTube or anywhere else. The only place that someone can have access to this link is if they saw the ad and they decide to click the ad to go to the landing page. Yes, it's possible that someone saw the ad, uh, liked it, but decided to also share with their friend. That's 100% possible. But even though I would still consider that a lead from Facebook ads, because the reason that their friend find out about this special offer was through our Facebook ads. So just to recap, Cap, I create a custom subdomain and I also made sure that this landing page wouldn't be crawled by search engines like Google or Bing. So to truly make sure that the only way that someone finds out about this landing page is actually through our Facebook ad. So that's how I can confidently say that only 81% of leads were actually being tracked and reported in an ads manager. Now, I just wanna go through a, a few different variables. So what I did on this landing page is I actually embedded an active campaign form. If you're not familiar with active campaign, it's a software, a little bit like MailChimp or HubSpot that allows you to send and automate emails. And they also have this feature where you can embed it a form. And then when someone submits the form, it gets added directly into something like a list in active campaign and then I created a brand new list. So that's how I know these people that I just showed you in active campaign right here. Those are the people that opted in through the landing page and that's it. So now let's talk about things that could potentially make the tracking better or worse. So in this example, I am not using the conversion API. I did verify my domain. I did go into aggregate event measurement to make sure that the lead event is definitely something that I want to be sending to Facebook. So I went through all the different steps to make sure that the leads would potentially get tracked in ads manager, but I am not using the Facebook conversion API. And the reason for that is because I am using an active campaign form. So it would be pretty tricky to send information like the user's first name, last name, uh, and their email address to the Facebook conversion API. And I just didn't think that for this sort of setup and also for a free offer that it would have made sense to uh, set up and install the Facebook conversion API for this specific offer. And like I said, this is a free offer. So if they like the ad, they like what they see, they go on the landing page and it makes sense for them, they're gonna convert. They're not really gonna go and do too much research or think about it because it's 100% free, there's no catch. And that's the difference when you're offering something for free versus let's say I was selling a $50 product. The, when I'm selling the $50 product, people might actually want to do a little bit more research or maybe wait, see if they can maybe find something better or for cheaper. And they'll, like I said, do more research, they'll take more time. But the longer the sales cycle is, the harder it is for Facebook to be able actually to 
associate that conversion to one of your campaign. So this is a huge, huge, huge variable. So when we're offering something for free, based on the data that I have in front of me, I can tell you that about 81% of the leads are getting tracked by the Facebook pixel. But now let's say I was selling a product for let's say 60 or $70. Well, that rate would actually go down. It would probably not be 81%. It would probably be more something like 60%. So it does a lower based on how long the sell cycle is. So guys, hopefully this gives you more clarity on how accurate the Facebook pixel is for tracking things like leads and purchases. Now, just keep in mind that the ratio will change depending on your offer. If you're offering something for free, like what I did in this experiment, and it is something like B2C, right? So we're actually offering something directly to the public and it, this is not a B2B uh, experiment. So this is actually not for my agency. It, this is actually a setup that I have for a client we're able to see a 81% in terms of what we're able to see in ads manager, the reporting rate. But if we had something like a product that we're selling for a price, well, that percentage would definitely be lower and even lower if it is B2B. So just keep all these different things in mind. I think that after watching this video, you'll probably be able to estimate a number of how many purchases or leads that are not getting reported back in ads manager. And you can kind of use this number to forecast the real numbers and the real results. Hopefully this helped guys uh, definitely consider subscribing if you like this content and if you want to see more content. And I strongly recommend that you go check out some of the other videos in the channel. Bye for now.